Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and my schedule got all messed up because my mother came into town and I, had, I was talking to her and some other people and I got a late start this morning so it's all messed up. But I did do some interesting research for you today to look up. Um, I've, got, I've got Miguel Valles on the brain this week for some reason. This guy, there are two guys that I think history is going to look very favorably on, and that's David Schwartz and Miguel Valles in this, in this picture. I've told you in my videos, I don't think Miguel Valles just uh, heard about this startup named Ripple and went and worked for them. I believe he was placed there. Um, I don't buy any of this XRP security stuff. I believe, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to go through all that, but first I just wanted to show you, here's what the market's doing today. It's 281 billion. But like I said, in one of my last videos, this is all a distraction. And by the end of this video, you'll kind of see that this is all a distraction. What's important is the foundation and the chess pieces that have been moved. Okay. With, with regard to XRP holders, um, this is, uh, Tiffany Hayden had, had tweeted this out. The Stanford Blockchain Conference 2020. Now, you can go and you can watch. This is today. David Schwartz is going to be talking there. Um, and this guy, Arturo Portilla, at Arturo underscore um, P underscore A, he posted um, the live stream links and the agenda. And as you can see down here, David Schwartz will be speaking at 3 p.m. I believe that's Pacific time, which would be 6 o'clock Eastern time. So you might want to go check that out. And if you do, just remember this guy's find him on Twitter and he's got the link. All right. Um, and then I saw this from CZ Binance and this is pretty cool. Um, not, not, I guess pretty cool is the wrong wording for that. Um, it was pretty interesting because I didn't really know where this was coming from. He says, breaking, nothing has changed in Malta for Binance or any other crypto exchanges. No licenses were granted to anyone by Malta as of yet. Some media, even crypto media, has such a bad habit of releasing misleading news that only hurts their own credibility and our industry. And then he had tweeted this out. There's a mix of truth, FUD, and misconception. Binance.com is not headquartered or operated in Malta. This is old news and has always been the case. Hence, there's quite a bit of FUD turning this into a breaking story. The community's comments show that, that understanding. And this is he's talking about this article by Coindesk that they're neither licensed to operate nor is Binance regulated in Malta, the country's chief financial watchdog has said. So anyway, who knows what that means? I'm not even on Binance.com, so it doesn't really affect me, but it's interesting for the industry. Now, X-Men XRP, uh, I told you, I tweeted yesterday to keep your eyes on all the big boys. They're, they're all coming. Merrill Lynch, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs. We saw yesterday that Morgan Stanley is buying E-Trade. E-Trade is getting into crypto. You figure. Fidelity International invests $14 million in Hong Kong crypto exchange operator. Um, spinoff, this is a spinoff from the U.S. financial services giant Fidelity Investments, has invested $14 million in Hong Kong-based operator of crypto exchange OSL. We're going to see more and more of these types of things. So that's really all you need to know here. You're going to see a lot of mergers and acquisitions by a lot of the traditional financial media. We shall see how it all unfolds. Okay, um, moving along. The crypto utility guy sent me this. Uh, this is interesting. Real, Real XRP Boy has put out a, a couple of interesting videos of late. Let's watch this one. Because if money can't perform those two functions, then it's not a very good product. Now, if we had competition in currencies, real competition, like the private competitive currency approach envisioned by Frederick von Hayek, well, then people would have a choice. They could choose a form of privately issued money that did provide a meaningful unit of account and a reliable store of value. I'm not talking about 
the games played by speculators in foreign exchange markets, betting on this beauty contest of currencies where governments are the only money suppliers allowed into the market, and it's run like a strict cartel. I'm talking about the kind of money that is needed to provide a solid foundation for free market capitalism. I thought that was an interesting video, and as an FYI, I believe that is a, uh, I believe that was a younger uh, Judy Shelton, the Federal Reserve nominee. I believe that's who that is, but I didn't see anywhere it say that that was her. But I think that was her. All right, now he, uh, somebody's on the ball. Hoe Seiko Carmona sent me this. Um, this is something I showed you a video of this the other day, but I don't know if you realize it, but you can go to R3's website. This is info.r3.com slash corda-settler. And you can actually click through this to see how XRP is set up to work on the Corda Settler. It, you can actually click these different stages. There's one click, and then you can click it again, and it shows you the next step of this process. And down here on the bottom, you can see the wording um, that, where it explains to you what's going on. And then you can click all the way. This is make a payment. Um, and then it's uh, then at the, the very end, it um, shows settling the obligation. And it shows you how that works. So and it's got XRP working right in the middle of all of it. But an interesting, interesting website to go check out when you have some time. Now, let's talk about the CME group. This is what this is the core of what I wanted you to a lot of you out there to understand that you may not. Okay, now here's what I, here's what, <laughs> now this for me goes back to 2013. And I want to listen very closely. This is about the Miguel Valles. I, I keep telling you Miguel Valles is stuck in my crawl. And one thing that, that kind of was the beginning of Miguel Valles kind of sticking in my crawl back during, um, two th and I mean in a good way, back during two th the run-up in 2017, he came out once or twice, maybe three or four times, and he did the hashtag zero doubt. And, um, you know, there were, there were rumors about 2017 with regard to XRP. Now, I'm not saying I believe them or, or don't believe them, but I have heard rumors before that, that the run-up in XRP, the way that it ran up, was a um, and hey now listen, this is pure. This is purely just rumors. I've seen it in you know on Twitter and different things where people think that that 2017 was a trial run for what's going to go on in XRP. I've been I have read that before. I'm not saying I believe it or don't believe it. I'm just telling you I've read it. Well, back during that time, Miguel Baez was tweeting hashtag zero doubt and all this. Well, hashtag zero doubt, you know, you, you see people all over Twitter and crypto land that are, you know, being hypey is a really terrible thing. But it's OK if, if Miguel Baez says hashtag zero doubt. I don't think you can get any more hypey than hashtag zero doubt. That's OK because he works at Ripple, but it's not OK for any of the influencers out there to, to be hypey. <laughs> that's not that's way off out of bounds. But anyway, that's not the point of this. Just like when Ripple came out at the end of 2019 with an article that said that 2020 will be the year of the digital asset. Hashtag zero doubt to me always said to me, well, who could how could anyone have zero doubt if this is just the whims of speculators up and down, up and down. Well, the only reason they could have zero doubt is if they knew that it was not at the whims of speculators. And that's me talking. That's my opinion. Okay. The only way you could say that 2020 is the year of the digital asset is if you know it's not dependent on what speculators do because you can't control that. What I'm about to show you is all the reason, the, the, the core of the reasons surrounding Miguel Valles, why, why I think that this cake is baked. And I think Miguel Valles was placed where he was placed. And you just, you decide, use your, use your common sense after I show you what I show you. May 18th of 2015, Ripple Labs raises $28 million from IDG Capital Partners, CME Group, right? Forget everything except CME Group. Okay, uh, they've they've raised this money. CME Group, the world's leading derivatives marketplace, 
Um, and then it goes on and on. There's, there's a quote down here from, this is um, Rumi Morales, Executive Director, Strategic Investment Group at CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse derivatives marketplace. Ripple is transforming global settlement architecture and its momentum and payments will give way to an expanding portfolio of use cases in the financial markets. Joining this funding round is another example of how we are investing in technologies that impact our industry. Now, right after that, the very next year, okay, they invest in Ripple and then all of a sudden, Miguel Valles decides he wants to go join Ripple. CME Group Executive Miguel Valles joins Ripple. Proud to announce that they're, you know, we've seen this article before. So he's going to join Ripple. Now remember, remember, and, and this is very important, and this is a Tony Valentino quote that I found. CME, CME Group are early investors in Ripple. Miguel Valles was moved from CME to Ripple to handle XRP. If you don't know what position Miguel Valles held at CME, then Google it and then understand why he was moved to handle XRP. At the CME group, he was the head of the precious metals desk, I think specifically gold. But this is uh, Stephen Bull from the Dieps, uh, where he's showing that these guys invested in Ripple. This is from the CME group website. Okay, you following me? Now, remember, all of this, Miguel Baez leaves the CME group, one of the most regulated one of the most regulated groups on the planet Earth. This guy, who is a who is a graduate of, um, as I recall, he's a graduate of uh, in engineering from University of Miami. He's a graduate of Columbia University, and I think I want to say New York University as well. He's got three degrees, and he's been in reg in the most regulated inter industries on planet Earth. I think he was with Bank of America, maybe Morgan Stanley. CME group. Don't quote me on this. This is from memory. But here's a guy that's coming from the most regulated industry in the world, and, and he's going to risk it all to go to this company that supposedly is under this threat of possibly being called a security. Do you believe that with the pedigree he's got? Do you believe that the guy, do you believe this guy's going to go to those guys at the CME? Do you, do you think CME is going to invest in Ripple and then send their guy from the CME group, the head of precious metals, to go work at this company as the head of markets of XRP, which has this threat of being a security where he could get put in jail? <laughs> do you think that happens? No, it does not happen. People have to have assurances. And this is a point I made in a prior video. There's going to be a day, there's going to be a day when, I don't know if it's going to be a news piece or if it's just going to be the price. I don't know, but there's going to be a day that somewhere, somehow, the average Joe investor out there that didn't have the guts that you and I have to hold XRP now before we have all these assurances, but there's going to be a day when the assurances that had to have been given to Miguel Valles are giving are given to average Joe investors, and when that happens, watch out, Katie, bar the door, watch out, because at that point, all of the risk disappears, or or that portion of the risk of being an XRP investor disappears. And when that happens, watch out. That's all I got to say. Now, I'm going to drive this point further home. CME Group, just so, so you know what it is, the Chicago, CME Group, the Chicago. Uh, Mercantile Exchange. Um, it's a global markets company. It owns large derivatives, options, and futures exchanges in Chicago, New York City, using its CME Globex trading platforms. It also owns CME Clearing, which provides settlement and clearing of exchange trades. CME Group offers the widest range of global benchmark products across all major asset classes based on interest rates, equity indexes, Folks, this is ground zero of power in the markets, in the traditional markets, and they send their guy to Ripple. This is the CME Group's website. Well, let's take a look around on their website, the world's leading and most diverse derivatives marketplace. And we look around and we see a CME liquidity tool. Where do we hear the word liquidity all the time? Miguel Valles, that's all he talks about is liquidity, making XRP as liquid as a fiat currency. How could Miguel Valles get that done? Well, one way he could get that done was, is with the help of his buddies at the CME Group who are also investors in Ripple, the company. 
making sense to any of you? Well, let's look at some of their markets. Acts, let's look down here where our markets, let's click on that and see where that leads us. Our markets, let's look around. Um, let's see, that, let me see if I can pull this, let me see, this is the one I wanted to see. Let's look through their markets. They got all kinds of different markets, agricultural, energy. But if you look down here, they've got cryptocurrency. That's weird. If you click on CME cryptocurrency products, now here's a company that has invested in Ripple. They've sent their guy to be head of XRP markets at Ripple. But the only cryptocurrencies that they are doing anything with on their platform right now, keywords right now, CME Bitcoin products, They've got, a, that's Ethereum. So they're, they're into Bitcoin. They're into Ethereum. They've got a CME CF Bitcoin. Um, uh, this is their index, CME CF Ether dollar. All right. So they've got nothing. Here they are. They think at Ripple's worthy of an investment. They, they, they send their guy to head the XRP markets, but they don't do anything. There's just nothing going on with XRP, is there? Or is there? And so let's take a step further. This is the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. The U.S. Commodity is the CFTC. It's an independent agency of the U.S. government created in 1974 that regulates the U.S. derivatives market, which includes futures, swaps, certain kinds of options. Well, these guys, they are the regulators of the CME, right? So they regulate the CME. These guys are all on the same team, folks. Don't you understand what I've been telling you? They're all on the same team. And for some reason, I don't know what the reason, Ripple is on the same team. All of these people in traditional financial media, and this goes all the way back. This, this takes me back to 2013 when I'm looking down the list of coin market cap. And I, it was after the market had crashed during that time. And I'm looking down this list and I said, okay, well, I guess I was wrong. And I said, I'm just going to take all of this stuff. It had all gone crazy and then crashed. And I'm going to take all of my losses and I'm, I'm going to put whatever I have left. And the only company, the only website I could find that had what looked like the gr a group of people with, with pedigree, a group of people that were act actually had a plan. The only one I could find was Ripple. And at the time, it went by Ripple on that list. And they just showed up on the scene out of nowhere. Now, back to this. The CME, okay? This is, this is, is regulated by, it's regulated by the CFTC. So let's look at this. Ripple's XRP might be the next big crypto futures market. Bitcoin futures may have been launched and trem with tremendous fanfare, but XRP futures, on the other hand, not so much. In fact, UK-based startup Crypto Facilities has been operating a futures mar market for the world's thir third largest cryptocurrency developed by blockchain startup Ripple for almost 18 months now, almost as if they're just doing a trial with it over in the UK. Let's look at this for a minute. This was in May 20th of 2018. Um, it says um, for almost 18 months now, and while the company's CEO, Timo Schlafer, has been tight-lipped about the product so far, he sees trends in recent data that indicate broader XRP futures adoption may be on the horizon. We have pretty good order books, Schlafer told Coindesk, and we're in the process of working with some of the large mark, some of the large market makers to draw that further. And so anyway, this is just an article. It's like a drip drip. All right, now look at this. This is from Stuart XRP. Well, October 10th, 2016, Crypto Facilities partnered with CME Group. Ripple then announced Crypto Facilities would be first derivatives exchange to list regulated XRP futures contracts. This was three years ago. P.S. Crypto Facilities LTD is authorized and regulated by FCA. Now, let's go to this. This is from a person who was on Twitter back during this time period. Let's see. September 2018, puts this out. This is a whole string of tweets. I'm going to go over a few of them. What is Crypto Facilities, you may ask? Crypto Facilities is a financial services firm that provides FCA regulated risk management and trading solutions for digital assets such as Bitcoin. It also operates as a broker for exchange traded futures and options. 
their products serve to trade and manage the, the price risk of Bitcoin and other digital tokens. It offers a platform for customers to make Bitcoin transactions online, da 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 da. Next, and guess who is quick to jump on board? None other than Barry Silbert and his digital currency group. We know Barry, Barry Silbert has like magnet hands and is involved in everything good in the crypto space. He once tweeted his prediction about Ripple XRP will be swift. Now remember folks, this all goes back. Here's what this all makes me think. This, remember Barry Silbert, Mike Novogratz, all these guys, they won't talk about Ripple and XRP, but they're investors. They know that it's, it, it's like they consider it the second wave. It's like they're sitting on the sidelines. They want Bitcoin to moon first and then they know that Ripple is like that, that this all goes online. And I believe it goes based on everything I've seen, read, heard. I believe it all goes online in 2020. I believe if you look here, um, what they're talking about is Barry Silbert. He invests in cr this crypto facilities right after this happens. Now, look, it didn't take long before before interconnected world begin uh, begin working together towards their unified goals. CME Group decided to partner up with crypto facilities. CME Group is an early Ripple investor. Miguel Viaz was moved like a chess piece, just like makes you wonder if Rachel Lee and Tony Valentino are the same person moved like a chess piece from CME to Ripple to merge both worlds. And then you get this suddenly unknown the most. Uh, to most, Ripple followed CME Group and partners up with crypto facilities. Are you beginning to see how interconnected these companies are and work towards one goal? Sometimes they may, say, may seem to have a disagreement, or three, but in the end, they each need each other. And this is from Insights, where Ripple formalized its partnership with crypto facilities, a London-based financial uh, services firm that provides SCA regulated risk management and trading solutions, da, 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 da. That was in 2016 before the 2017 run up. Then you get to this. What you get out of this article is that Ripple are going after liquidity, exactly what Miguel Valles was brought on to do. And this liquidity that's needed can only come if Miguel merges both his worlds, his former and his current. Ripple's new product, da da da. Let's let's just kind of skim through this. With proven governance and fastest transaction confirmation, it's kind. XRP provides global reach and fast settlement finality to banks and liquidity providers. And then this, making XRP available for trading on crypto facilities, offers institutions custodying XRP an opportunity to manage their downside price risk. All right, and then moving along. So why didn't the CME group just list XRP instead of Bitcoin? Why did Ripple and CME need to go to UK to be to be listened on former Goldman Sachs directors crypto facilities exchange? It's simple, no regulations in US to avoid unnecessary attention, but they need to test. So UK it is. And the question, and then it goes on. A Coindesk article on crypto facilities and CME. We have pretty good order books, and this is the article I showed you a minute ago. The CME won't comment on whether XRP will listed because that will drive value of XRP insane and attract unnecessary attention. They're not ready, folks. They haven't been ready, but I think this is the year that they are ready, and that is what all this is about. Um, and it says again, don't expect direct answers. Da da da. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Now. To, to further illustrate my point, which is this is all all, all of these things uh, to think that these 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 markets has just been happening or whatever. Yeah, there's whales. Yeah, there's manipulation and all that's going on. But look behind the scenes. This look, this is a controlled situation and I can I can prove it. This is from the CME Group's Leo Malayman, Wheel Team Bitcoin. One of the senior figures at Derivatives Giant CME Group believes that Bitcoin is on a course to become its own tradable asset class. In an interview with Reuters on Tuesday, the company's chairman said Bitcoin will likely to come to trade in a similar way to how gold and stocks are exchanged today. Notably, um, and then he, he went on to say, we will regulate, make Bitcoin not wild nor wilder. We'll tame it into a regular type investment of trade with rules. In the inter interview, he explained he initially did not believe in Bitcoin, but that was that his interest grew later. I'm still that same guy who believes in at least examining change. And then 
later on, and this really made some Bitcoin people mad, but later on, Trump administration popped 2017. Bitcoin bubble ex CFTC chair says, um, Christopher Giancarlo, who left the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, which regulates the CME group at the end of his five-year term as chairman in April, told Coindesk in an interview, one of the untold stories of the past few years is that the CFTC, the Treasury, the SEC, National Economic Council director at the time, Gary Cohn, believed that the launch of Bitcoin futures would have the impact of popping the Bitcoin bubble, and it worked. There you go, folks. The, look, there's nothing new under the sun. I, I, I decided to go with Ripple and XRP back in 2013, and I've, and I've felt great and extremely confident and, and never felt more confident than I do as I sit here during this video. And the reason I have is because I knew that this was bigger than anyone realized because I knew that none of it would happen without some kind of coordination from the powerful people. And there will always be the powers that be. I'm 46 years old and, and people, that's just the way life works. I'm going to finish this. I don't think Miguel Valles just showed up. I don't think Miguel Valles agreed to work for Ripple without the assurances that any responsible, very brilliant guy like he is, would, would get without going to do something like that. He would not risk his career, his life, his family, jail time, no way in the world, doesn't happen. I will finish with this. Spoke with Tom McLeod of Omni. We're seeing Omni integrating XRP into their platform. New use cases for XRP. Uh, what does that do to global liquidity? Yeah, it's, it's incredibly accretive to global growth of liquidity, especially for XRP, if it's being used in those flows. So what, what is liquidity? Liquidity means that I can move value through XRP without necessarily impacting the price. Right? So I can get in, I can get out without having major market shifts. If you look at other markets, uh, take FX as an example, the driving force of FX liquidity is not speculation, it's not liquidity provisioning by market participants, it's the use of that liquidity by real businesses. So as an example, if you have an auto parts manufacturer in Japan who's getting paid in euros every day, they need to swap that euro for yen. So they are in the markets regardless of whether it's going up, whether it's going down, they don't care, right? Omni is the same way. They're gonna be using XRP liquidity no matter what's happening in the markets. Coil will do something similar. XRapid will do something similar, right? So as you drive more and more of these use cases, liquidity should start to really pick up pace. You just mentioned XRapid for that specifically. With deeper liquidity, what does that do for those financial institutions that are using that? The more liquidity you have, the tighter spreads, the more efficient XRapid and XRP end up being as that um, real-time on-demand sort of payment funding mechanism, right? So the more Omni uses it, the more Coil uses it, the more other use cases out there start to use this liquidity, the more the volumes grow, the tighter the spreads get, and the easier it is to move money through XRP and XRapid. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that I believe that XRP represents the one time in my lifetime that I've been able to invest in something that I think the big boys designed from the very beginning. Thank you for listening.